Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to a very special episode of the show, and I've got a very special guest star for this episode, none other than Mr. Brendan Snyder. What's up, Good Brendan? How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me here. This should be a lot of fun. Yeah. So, I, you know, I've been long wanting to do kind of a look at box sets, but not so much like talking about, well, these are my favorite box sets, but mm -hmm. talking about why some box sets are really great and we love them so much and why others and eh, maybe miss the mark a little bit. And if you've ever followed Brendan's show, he talks a lot about box sets he's gotten and does unboxings and shows them off. And he's got a lot of them proudly displayed behind him. And I know he moved yeah. into his new house not that long ago. And he's right. has a dedicated music room. And and I know for me, it's often difficult to figure out where to put these things because I'm running out of room. So I thought it would be great to have him on the show so we could talk about like uh, each one of us, like maybe five box sets that really work and why they work so well, and then maybe five that nah, maybe don't really work well that well, and why. So this right. also the concept of the show is, you know, what makes a good box set, and what makes a box set that kind of fails the mark a little bit. So I don't know, Brendan, maybe you want to add a little color commentary here on what you really look for in a box set, and why, you know, one may be so much better than another when there's so many of them to be had out there. Oh, absolutely. And it seems like today, everybody is putting out box sets. You know, if you go back into the uh, late 80s, early 90s, when box sets first really started, they were pretty rare and very, very special if a band did it. Today, everyone's doing it. Uh, they're digging through the archives. They're finding everything uh, that they can shove into these things. So sometimes you get ones, as you said, very good. They've hit the mark. They've done it right. Other ones that haven't. So for me, at least, uh, I kind of break it down into two things, uh, content and packaging. Right, because sometimes you can have fantastic packaging, the content's not there, and vice versa. But for me, I like um, you know unreleased material on it. I'm a big fan of you know alternate takes and demos and B sides, like a collection of all that stuff. That it, we as hardcore fans, if you bought you know CD singles back in the day or soundtracks or whatever, and you've got those songs spread all out, and a box set gathers it together. To me, that's icing on the cake there. Yes. And then, as I said, the other second thing being packaging, um, you know, some of these things, it's like uh, the ones where they just uh, take the, the studio albums, put them all together, and then there's nothing there but a thin cardboard sleeve. There's really nothing to enhance the listening experience. But if you have the, the book, the memorabilia, some uh, collectible item, and you're listening to it, and you're pulling it all out, it just really uh elevates everything in my opinion so those are the kind of things at least that i look for in good box sets yeah and i think you hit on a lot of the stuff that i also look for so you know of late and we'll probably mm -hmm. talk about in some of our picks uh you know remasters and remixes remix is oh, right. like the key thing now right so right. I like to hear a good remix. I think remasters for me have kind of lost its luster because so many of the catalogs of so many of the bands that we love have had various remasters over the last mm -hmm. 30 years and do anything right. really sound any different from the others. So like nowadays, right. if you get a box set, that's just got another, another remaster and right. not much else. Yeah. So the remix for me is a drawing card. Uh, like you mentioned, it's always yeah. cool to hear unreleased tracks, rare mm -hmm. stuff, singles that weren't, you know, or um, other versions or edits. Yeah, exactly. That weren't available on a previous album. That's always something really cool. Mm -hmm. Live stuff, whether it be a live tracks like audio mm -hmm. tracks or a bonus DVD or Blu-ray of live stuff. That's a right. big plus for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't even think of pulling, but like the Rush uh, ones of late have been really great for that. So oh, yeah. Remix or a remaster and mm -hmm. a live concert from that tour. That's fantastic. Like you, I'm a sucker for great packaging. And yeah. sometimes the great packaging can almost outweigh everything else. Like if yeah. and I'll show an example of one band in particular that okay. have nailed the packaging, like in a big way where you get like a, a book and you get mm -hmm. like all the other stuff we've talked about. And then it's a, you know, a neat package fits on the shelf. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I'm sure we'll talk about at length today is right. the sets that don't really fit anywhere, right? The weird, yeah. I mean, where do you put them? Where do you put these things, right? I mean, you know, Brendan's got the nice, uh, you know, 
shelves behind him where he's got room on top. I, you know, box sets, they don't fit here at all. Right. So I have to put box sets in a closet or like on another shelf somewhere else with mm-hmm. things that it doesn't belong with. It's just like, it gets messy. So we'll probably, for me, the weird packaging will have a lot to do with the box sets that don't work segment of this right. particular show. So, uh, so yeah. So with all that being said, I'll have uh, Brendan kick us off with his first selection on the good right. side. These are the ones that work. We'll These are the good ones. ones. Yes. <laughs> all right. Um, this may well be my absolute favorite box set of all. Uh, I didn't really think about it when I was grabbing it in that way, but after, uh, you know, reviewing everything I had here, I was like, you know, this one just hits all the marks. So for me, Tom Petty, Wildflowers, and all the rest. Um, and they had so many versions of these things. I don't know if this is like the super deluxe edition, but, um, they did, there you go. Yep. They got the four disc version. And I think there was a two disc version of this, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think there was. And that yeah. was something also I wanted to talk about, which is when uh, the bands do these, one of the things I like is the multiple editions that will come out. Uh, so that if you don't want to shell out for like this one, which was a website only one, uh, which had uh, five discs instead of this one, which had the four discs that was in it, uh, you didn't have to kind of a thing. But this one here, um, you know, meets it all in terms of uh, packaging. There's five discs. It had 70 tracks on this thing. I think um, nine of them were unreleased. And, of course, the best part of this was that it came with the uh, second disc, the All the Rest, that was in there. So, you know, you had Wildflowers, fantastic album. We all loved it. You find out it was supposed to have been a double album, and then they release it as the double album. So as the music fan... Not only was I getting uh, rare stuff, you know, you got a Wildflowers live, you got alternate versions, which was Finding Wildflowers. So the recording of that, uh, where they're trying to figure out how the song is going to go, but you got 10 tracks, studio recorded. It was actually picked by Tom Petty before his passing. So this was, while put together after his death, he actually had a hand in it. And that made me enjoy it even more, because when I kind of looked at this, Initially, I know there was many more than just the 10 songs that came out on all the rest, but that's what he picked. He only wanted those 10 as the second disc for this. So I kind of accepted that and so forth. Um, Demos that are on this, but then, and I don't want to go through, you know, spend too much time opening and going through the whole thing, but the packaging on this is just beautiful. And if you ever gone through this here the artwork inside that is different than the artwork that's in here so they actually did different packaging for it of course you get you know something that tells you the number uh that it is having the tabs on these that make easy access is always a key thing for me um you know just having um cool memorabilia stuff and done right so the way that this is in a folder with all the stuff that's in there it's not just thrown in it's not in an envelope or something that's really hard to get into. Um, so I always like things like this. This was the tour book. So when bands put tour books and I, you know, didn't get to go see that tour kind of thing. And I also like the smaller size of it because the monster ones that you buy at the shows are always a little too much. So the fact that they put them, them in here and then it just did a fantastic hardcover book and um, that uh, was just beautiful with tons and tons of information to read track by track commentary, all of these things, individual art that was done just for the packaging of this. They hired a new artist to do uh, the work for this. So it wasn't even stuff that was from back in the day marketing, like there was brand new art content, unreleased stuff, beautiful packaging, just in my opinion, hit all the marks. I love, love that box set. So now did you buy that one before you got the other one? Or did you get the other, the smaller one that I also have first? I bought this first because I thought I don't need that extra disc. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what was this like 30, 40 bucks? I can't remember. It might yeah, be a something like that, yeah. Yeah. This other one I think was like 150. <laughs> so it was like, nah, for one extra disc, I don't need it. I got this. I started listening to it to, you know, to do my reviews and stuff like that. I fell in love with it head over heels. I just thought this every bit of the content on here was so good. I shelled out for the box. I (laughs) immediately went online and ordered that. (laughs) I'm glad I did. But here's one part of not this box per se, but one thing that I have found to be a negative thing in the industry, the bonus disc, the fifth disc that you couldn't get anywhere else, website only through this packaging, finding wildflowers has now been released 
as a single disc by itself. You can go buy it. I spent the 150 bucks just to get this. And I could have gone and got the single disc later on. So I am bummed about that. But at the time, getting this, having the content and everything that's in it, the way that it is, you know, works for me. So I'm I'm still happy. As I said, I think it may well be my absolute favorite box set. Favorite box. Well, that's so then it was money well spent. Yeah, that's always. I, I think so. Yes. Right? It's like because you got to collect them all. If you're a real fan, you have to have them all. And I, it's always kind of a bummer when they'll release one version and you go buy it. And then a couple months later, another one comes out. And then six months later, you got it has vinyl and the CDs and the booklet. It's super. Right. Dope. It's like, when does it end? Right. So at right. some point you have to say, OK, I have exactly what I need more than I need. But we're always kind of tempted with the other, mm -hmm. right? It's like, well, it's got that extra this. And it's tough. It really yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's what they're doing with uh, trying to tempt us with those remixes now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. hundred percent. So speaking of remixes, um, I'll start off with, and I, again, I don't know if this is my favorite, uh, but I wanted to bring an example of, I think the band that's doing box sets the best today mm -hmm. and have been for quite a while now. And that's Jethro Tell. Yeah. So I just I grabbed heard. one. I could have grabbed any of them because mm -hmm. they're all great. In fact, I, I haven't even opened this one yet, but I just got in uh, a broadsword. It's oh. on the beast, right? So it's not even still in trim. I think that's the best one they've done so far. Really? Okay. Well, I, I know there's tons in there. I just haven't yeah, yeah. Came, like oh. yesterday. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, but I, I pulled this one out because this one I think exemplifies everything you really want in the box set. First of all, it's got the great packaging. I mean, it, right. you, you literally, this could fit on a shelf like a like a, a big DVD or something like that. And if you have others like this, and I've got all of them, and I got some Marillion ones too, and they're from the same company that does these. Um, it's you know like a hardback book almost. Mm -hmm. It has, uh, in many cases, a remix. And Stephen Wilson's been working with the band, so you got the Stephen Wilson remix of the album or someone else, depending on how you know far back you go with these. Um, and then you get all the associated recordings and what's great about Jethro Tull is when throughout history when Tull went into the studio to make a new album they recorded way more material than they ever needed they released the album and, and Ian Anderson would hold off and keep all that not used stuff the, the unused tracks in the vaults right and maybe on the master yeah it's like and 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 these songs are not throwaway songs Brendan they're no, not at all they're as good as anything else on the album and he would sit on these for mm -hmm. 20, 30 years. And then maybe, you know, in the 90s or the 2000s, a remaster would come out. He'd yeah. throw a couple of them on there, right? And you'd be like, wow, where have these right. been hiding? Or there'll be a best of collection. There'll be one. Well, there was Nightcap that came out. Do you know, do you have that two CDs? I have Nightcap, yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's got, got a bunch of tracks from one recording session that's on there that didn't become the album. Yeah, oh, for the uh, the Passion Play, right? So it's got right, one of the, play, oldest, right. the original recordings of Passion Play, the Chateau Disaster tapes, and then you got the second <laughs> disc is all leftover stuff from all these other albums, and it's just right. like oh, two albums worth of stuff. It's like holy cow! So so what he does is so they they you get the remix, you get mm -hmm. all this extra stuff, right? And then you get these glorious booklets, mm -hmm. which basically tells you everything you need to know about these albums history and it's so Who's packed i mean look how dense the text is on that oh, it's like Some reading books, a book right it's exactly <laughs> the book in and of itself i mean that that for me is like a 30 40 dollar book that i would go buy as a hardcover book you're getting it with the music too and some of these books we get and the, the text is large and they're mostly photos and doesn't really tell you anything you don't already know when I read those Jethro Tull books, it, I'm always finding something out new. Yeah, yeah. They're like little mini biographies, but just centered on the one album and that one snapshot in time. And to add to the snapshot in time, you, especially for this one, and they've, they've done a good job on a, a lot of these, you get two discs of a live show, highly sought after by fans from 1977. Mm-hmm. And then you get a DV, and then you get a couple DVDs, which have the video live stuff on it as well. Yeah, as well as remixes and then you know different uh, surround sound mixes and all this other stuff. So like for the Jethro Tull fan, especially if you love songs from the wood, holy cow! All of a sudden you have songs from the wood like you've never seen or heard it before, and like everything. And and again, these are a great snapshot of everything encompassing Jethro Tull from this time period for this album live audio live video bonus tracks left over from the sessions a remix of the album a 50 page booklet or more 
might even be more. I don't even remember some of the other, almost a hundred pages. I mean, how for like what? Like again, I I acquired this later on, but uh, when these come out, they're anywhere from like you know forty nine to sixty seventy dollars. I mean, right? Look at all you get here. So to me, this is the way to do a box set. This is the gold standard. This is a plus. All the other ones I'll show in the good section are really good. Nothing comes close to this. Nothing. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, they definitely do it right. Absolutely. Yeah. And you hit on a key point there, too, that I think is going to become apparent as we talk more, which is cost, value yeah. of the box set itself. So some of these box sets that I'll be showing, really expensive ones, hundreds of dollars, whereas box set like what you just showed there, a $50 to $70 box set that comes with that much stuff on it is so much bang for your buck. You don't feel like you're getting ripped off. No. And then you, yeah, you get it and you dive into it and it's just, oh, so much stuff. You really feel like it was money well spent. Yeah. And I, and there are some, that's a good point. And there are some that are way more expensive than this. Mm -hmm. and you don't feel like you're getting the same type of value and content as you are in something like this. Like I can think of like, uh, like Frank Zappa Erie, which came out, I think, mm -hmm. within the last year. I'm a, I buy all these Frank Zappa boxes. It's crazy, right? But some of them are like a lot of money. And it's like you, you get, yeah, you get lots of cool live recordings. And there's, you know, some of them are jam packed with them. But there's really not all these extras that you get in something like this. And they'll be right. double the price, if not more than that. And you're kind of like, wow, geez, that's a lot of money to spend for something like that. I'm not getting the kind of content I'm getting in this and it's, this is half the price. Right. So right. you kind of have to really like take stock and like, well, what are you willing to spend and mm -hmm. the kind of money you're going to spend? What do you want to get in return out of that box set? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So I'll do the next one. Yep. All right. So um, another one that I just absolutely love. Um, and of course I'm a huge fan of them. So uh, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, the immersion box set. And one of the things I wanted to hit on was, um, you know, I think you touched on too. They do multiple versions. I have a 20th anniversary of this thing. I've got this one here, the immersion, um, which was like around the 35th anniversary kind of thing. Uh, they've just done the one now for 50 years, uh, but they're actually repeating content. Um, you know, so they did release it as a standalone disc, but the live show that came in here from 1974 was just put into the most recent one as a new remaster, and you're not getting anything bonus in there. But if we go back to this one here, which unfortunately is out of print, so those of you watching, it's going to be a pretty penny for you to get. Um, this one had on it uh, three CDs, two DVDs, and a Blu-ray in it. But what I liked about it was, again, the unreleased content. I do love all the, the little merch stuff that comes in here. There's marvels and all kinds of stuff. But you get the album remastered, and at the time, this was you know, hadn't been remastered in a while. So that was good. But you get the complete live performance, which was this. I bought this just I'm a hardcore fan. I've got to have my standalone copy of along course. with the box set. So they get me, you know, multiple times. But it was the third disc that was in here that was an early mastering done by Alan Parsons. And I know this is maybe sacrilege, but I've never liked the song Great Gig in the Sky. I don't like the gospel vocals on it. And so on this uh, early mix, they had yet to record those. Uh -huh. So there's no gospel sound. We're just hearing uh, Rick Wright and his keyboards and, uh, you know, the instrumental version of this thing. On top of that, we've got a track from Household Objects, the unreleased Pink Floyd album. Well, I mean, there was only two tracks that were done for it, but they tried, you know, for what, like a year to be able to record things just literally using household objects, you know, wine glasses, stuff like that, rubber band snapping. So one of those tracks is, is on here, and it was just sort of one of those holy grail things to hear what could have been. Um, you, then you get the DVDs and you're getting, you know, live shows and content and other stuff like that. I don't know how you feel about, um, you know, getting the 5.1 surround sound, the Blu-rays, things like that. And you know, the Jethro Toll box sets puts them in there. I'm not a big fan of that stuff. So if they shove too much of it in there, I always feel like I'm overpaying for something I'm not going to use. But I don't mind if it's just thrown in. You know, it's one disc that's in here. So they do do that in here. But, um, you know, I also like you know, kind of what's considered the, the the standard box, meaning the lift top hardcover, literally a box set. Um, I always keep these things in there just to, 
show what what it is. I'm sure you do too. Yeah, um, I stick them in there somewhere because they yeah. certainly don't stay on the back of the box, right? All right, no, of course not. But you know, just all the cool content, and of course, you know, I'm never going to take this stuff out and use it. You know, you get the coasters and stuff, and I'm not going to use these. They're just going to live in the box. Um, but I, just, I don't know. I just like having it. It's a little extra merch. Growing up as a kid, I liked collecting uh, promo items that you would go into a record store, city, see sitting on a counter somewhere. And then I'd be like, hey, when you guys are done with this, what are you going to do? And they're like, oh, we're just going to throw it out. So they'd put my name on it, give me a call when the promo was over and I'd get it. Well, now I'm getting stuff like that in the boxes. So that's very cool. Well, one of the other things I wanted to point out was I like when the bands put them in the individual sleeves. So I can actually take it out of the box and I can close the box up, stick it back on the shelf kind of a thing, and then just have this with me at the stereo for however long I'm listening to it. And then it can go back in here. When I have to keep this huge box next to my, my stereo and I'm just listening to the music, it's sort of past the point of wanting to dig into the content every time. Um, that's, that's one of the key things that I like about these is, uh, uh, in terms of packaging, the ease of it and, uh, the individual sleeves and stuff like that. So yeah, I guess is one of the great ones in my opinion. That's actually a uh, point I'm going to make on the second half of this program of, about that. Whereas you have these box sets with the, where all the discs kind of fit in, snap into something. And then you're stuck with mm -hmm. this thing that like, you got to lug around if you were like, you know, do you bring box sets in the car? Uh, you know, it's like, come on, it's no. But when you have these, you can you can definitely do that. Uh, before we move on to mine, I want to make one little point uh, mm -hmm. in regard to Pink Floyd. So you mentioned uh, how a lot of times what they'll do is in these box sets, they'll have this really rare, you know, recording live stuff or whatever. And then eventually down the road, they may release them separately. So you can go buy it as a standalone. One thing that they haven't done, and I don't remember which box set it's on, but they released... Mm -hmm the live at Pompeii film on a CD in right. one of the box sets. And they still have not released that as a standalone live album. And I don't know why they haven't done that because I think that is a mm -hmm. gold mine. Well, it's such a great live performance. Do you, uh, so you don't have uh pink Floyd's early years box set. No. no. Okay. So that was actually due to be released as part of it. And they decided at the last moment not to do it but it was digitally embedded in the Blu-ray discs that are in there, or the DVDs, whichever ones that it was. And hackers or whatever you want to call them figured it out and were able to download it. You can buy it as a bootleg. That's how I've gotten it. But it's actually not in the box and why it's never been released, but they did do a remix of it. So that's floating around out there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand it. Maybe it has something to do with the, you know, the the, the makers of the film and there's mm -hmm. probably kind of legality there. But I never understood because there's really no definitive Pink Floyd live album from that era. And they got it. It's, Pom right. it's a Pompeii film, right? So just release that as an audio CD slash vinyl collection or whatever. Well, and they could do a whole box set of just live at Pompeii. Yeah. Give us the video, give us the CD, put an LP in there. Yeah. I but never the remix then that they've already done. I mean, it <laughs> you know, we, we just gave them a box set that they could do. Yeah. I just never understood. It just seems to me like, you know, if, they, if they're looking to make money, people will right. buy it. So I just don't yeah. know. Yeah, right. It's gotta be there's gotta be a legal issue there. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it could it could come down to, you know, uh the arguments between Waters and Gilmore, right? They were right. having the same thing for animals, the 2018 remix of that only just came out was it this year 2023 or 2022 uh yeah no, here's 2022 yeah it was late last year yeah right but it took it five years over legal arguments so who knows maybe it even could just be interband uh member related issues it could be yeah well we'll see well yeah right we'll see i think at this point it's not happening but uh, i just hope record labels are what will watch this video and maybe take some ideas I think it's wishful thinking, but you <laughs> can only hope. We can, we can only hope. hope, right? We want a live at Pompeii official CD. Yes. We want it. We want it. All right. My next uh, selection here is White Snake Slide It In. Nice. So this comes in like one of these type of things, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and real as box. said, I like this as well because I think it helps you kind of navigate through all the goodies that are in there. It's kind of like- Yeah, just look box. at that right there in, in terms of uh, presentation. When you lift that up, it's just beautiful. It's amazing, right? At the top, you got the book. So, you know, for fans of this album, this is my favorite White Snake album. Uh, 
some of you who are watching are probably like, but Pete, I thought the 87 White Snake album was your favorite. Well, it's been overtaken in the last year or so. Uh, and here you get you know, a whole book on the whole history of this album. And there's a lot of history here because, of course, here you got kind of like changing lineups right mm-hmm. at the time when they recorded it. You've got and then you've got the UK version of the album yeah. and the lineup changed. You got the US version of the album. It's a little different. It's mixed differently. You got John Sykes on that version, not on the other one blah 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 there's all the, all this stuff with that um you get uh like the tour program again i love yeah. this i love this I do too. replica tour program and that's the perfect size too it totally is it totally is because again back to the tour programs and i have a whole bunch from the 80s mm-hmm. they're all different sizes and shapes and i'm like oh, where do you put this stuff right right I, I can't figure that out either they don't fit on bookshelves they don't fit no. they're actually with my box sets because my box sets are all different sizes too. exactly exactly and here we got a, a poster which i've mm-hmm. never even opened and then again back to your point before you've got all the discs Right, and I'll tell everybody what's on here in a second. You know, I've mentioned these on. And I like that they do different art on each one. Hundred percent. That is also great. And there's a ton of them in here. I mean, look look at how many CDs are in here. I mean, this is just crazy. So you've got the um, the original UK version of the album, and I I'll I'll read it off in a second. I believe it's uh, remix. And that now to put all this stuff back is always like a challenge. (laughs) Both the uh, the UK version and the US version together which i think is really really key because again for us folks here in the states we've only ever had the u.s version and to us that's the superior version mm-hmm. the folks in the uk i got plenty of friends who are just will will from from across the pond who are like no nah, the, the uk version is better it's got mickey moody and mel galley and guitar you got to have mickey moody and like i get all that so here you got u.s remix uh 35th anniversary remaster on disc one on cd2 you got the original uk mix newly remastered then you got live stuff and different versions and alternate takes and mixes and all sorts of other stuff and uh, original demos and dvd video i mean everything you could ever possibly want it's right. kind of like the jethro tell thing all over again everything you could ever want about this album both versions uk us live stuff book poster tour program in a nice solid box set. I mean, this again, this is gold standard stuff. This is, you know, if you love an album, and that's that's the crazy thing. It's like they're doing these box sets jam yeah. with stuff for a single record, <clears throat> not right. a whole career in retrospective. This is one right. album. You I know. know they used to used to only get box sets for entire careers, and now yes. we're down to doing them on albums. Yes. And it's like uh the who, who's next lifehouse box set that's getting ready to come out has 10 CDs in it. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's insane. Now, of course, we know that for that one, they were trying to record the Lifehouse project that didn't happen that ultimately became the other album, Who's Next? So you have all of the stuff that was from another album in it. Really, it's like getting two albums there, but I I love that stuff. And I can't believe it has sat in the vaults. I mean, any of the stuff that we're talking about today has sat in the vaults for the amount of time that it has. That's the thing. And, you know, if it wasn't down to how much money they could make off of these things, would they continue to sit in the vault? Probably. I mean, I think it, it all comes down to money. Yeah. Um, but, and demand of the fans, right? So, but yeah, Absolutely. the fact that they sit on all these things, all these recordings and live shows and video, and I, it's just forever. It's like, yeah, well, look at never, I always say. I mean, he's he's been passed away for over 50 years, and yet they somehow managed to find new stuff to release from him every few years. So. Yeah, yeah, of course. It never ends there'll be more absolutely and i i read something a while back uh in a bruce springsteen uh interview where he said he actually makes more money on these deluxe edition box sets the archival releases that he's doing than putting out a brand new studio album that's not surprising yeah yeah i think people yeah it's i mean because you, you have to imagine bruce's new albums still sell pretty well but mm-hmm. I think this whole nostalgia thing with people in our age group, I think, is something right. that it's it's hard to measure. And I think it's it's you, you can't deny the power of that. So, yeah. yeah, that's not surprising. Yeah. And I'm sure there's this kind of like uh, all sorts of hidden revenue there that they make on these things because of sure. all. Well, things well and them. it's all recorded and it's done. There's no studio time. There's nobody to pay. Right. I know they always have a producer, so to speak, somebody that packaged the whole thing. But I mean, in general, you're not you know, bringing in new mixing engineers and all those sort of things, um, you know, even though, yeah, they're putting money into it because if they do the remix, like with Steven Wilson or something, but it's far less cost than writing, uh, you know, a whole new album and, and stuff. Yeah, for sure. So tying in with uh, the one you just did, 
I actually had this one as my next one. So it was a uh, very uh, kismet there. Uh, nice segue. Years out. And as you said, you know, on, on any given day, you might have been picking this one over slide it in. I actually debated the same way, almost picked slide it in and decided to go with this one. Um, so uh, basically the same stuff you said, I won't spend too long on this. Um, but what I liked a lot about this, uh, again, the box aspect of this, but it had um, 87 evolutions in it. Um, has the disc where it's uh, the demos and the rehearsals, but then it also had um, one that was called 87 versions and it was the 2017 remixes that they did along with the 1987 remixes. So one of the discs in here collects together the Japanese EP that had four remixes and those remixes which have um, Vivian Campbell on them doing guitar solos because John Sykes had already left. So they worked some of his stuff into the single versions of it, which aren't on the album. So you're getting that, but then they did some new um, remixes and then package it like an album. So instead of just putting in here, the four song EP, which for me, pop on four song EP, it's over in no time. And yeah. I don't wanna be changing out discs. And I'm gonna get to more of that later in one of the other box sets that I don't think is very good. But they added to it some new content. They got, you know, something, you know, historical that was only available in Japan. And then they tacked on some single edits and things to it, um, making it a full album I can listen to where the tracks don't repeat either. But again, this, you know, David Coverdale, man, he's doing it right. He's going through his archive, uh, get the poster and stuff. You also get a separate book of lyrics in this one. I don't know if the one you had did that. No tour book. I was bummed about that in terms yeah, of this. Yeah. But, um, David Coverdale said something about why he's doing this, which is he doesn't want this done after he passes away. He wants to, to be in control of his catalog and get it out to the fans. And so that's why he's even done some of these recent ones that where the albums uh, uh, 10 or X uh, just got released again for like a 15th anniversary, I think. So, you know, and now he's doing a remix um, revisited version of the purple album, which yeah. is only what? eight years old I think it came out in 2015 yeah it's way too early but uh, I can understand why he's doing it but um, I just wanted to comment again you know these are hardcover books uh, very nice they're I I don't have an issue with what Jethro Tull has done where their book is in with the CDs around it but I do like to be able to take my book out separate from the discs so I do appreciate that and then like the other one that you showed you know, it's got all of the individual discs. It's got different art on these things. Um, there are some of these are gatefold. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think they're necessarily replicating the LP edition of it. I don't think that that's what was on it. But, you know, it's just nice. And they're also putting the discs in these plastic sleeves. So you get a little added protection. Some of the ones that, you know, I'll show later on. One of the things I don't like is that they don't do that. And then you're getting the wear on it. But uh, yeah, you know, David Coverdale, man, he's doing it right. And these box sets aren't that expensive. They're again from the fifty to seventy dollar range. Yeah, I, and I do. Yeah. Uh, you know, you mentioned a, a remix of the Purple album, which just came out not that long ago. I will yeah. say the one that I really did appreciate was the remix of the Restless Heart album, which I always thought that the mix that was originally released was a little tame. Mm -hmm. And he added some, I mean, with the new mix, man, it sounds like a real Whitesnake album now. It's like, it's, it's almost punch now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the way I always want a restless heart to sound. And so mm -hmm. I was very thankful of that one. I'm like, now it's to me, that version of restless heart is a true bonafide Whitesnake album where originally I was kind of like, absolutely you know, kind of limp, you know, but um, I was yeah, like, the songs were there, but it just, right. the production was kind of missing something. Absolutely. And I also think in, in terms of that, just um, he reordered the track listing. So one of the things that I like that he's done is not only when he does the remix, sometimes he will reorder the tracks, then he might embellish the songs, bringing in having somebody overlay a stronger guitar on top of it, which is one of the things he did for Restless Heart. Yeah. And it elevates it. You still get the original version in there remastered. A lot of people I hear complain about these remixes. Oh, it's sacrilege. You know, you, you're changing some, you know uh historical my original favorite album like hey man you can still go out and buy it but you can also now get this version of it and listen to it um so i don't i don't care that that purple album uh you know 
the White Snake called Purple Album uh, only came out eight years ago. I'm going to buy it when he does it because I just love these new remixed, uh, revisited uh, packages that he's doing. Uh, does he? Ha- are there going to be any additional tracks on that one? Because I uh, that's no me- this no. this one is just um, uh, the two discs and there's a DVD and it. I think it's it might be the the Deep Purple uh, or the Purple Tour that he did for the album. I'm not sure. Uh, but no, this and this one is not a box either. It's just a digipack three disc holding thing. Gotcha. Okay, I saw that. I guess he, that was incredible. That was yeah. oh, I that was a lot of yeah. fun because yeah, for me it's like I, I didn't you know some people complain it's like oh they play too much Deep Purple stuff on that tour. I'm like, well, that was, that the, was point the point of it all, right? Because when when are you going to hear these songs live ever again, right? So for me, I was in my glory. I was like, wow, this is the coolest because I've been a fan of Purple for most of my life. So. Mm-hmm. So I, I never had an issue with that album. You know, why, he's revisiting some old favorites that he played in another band, right? And again, nobody else is playing that stuff, so might as well. That's uh, right. Yeah. All right, so my next uh, one that I'm going to show is a box set, I think, that really works if you're someone who is interested in visiting a band for the first time or discovering a band for the first time. and. Mm-hmm you can get like a good chunk of their catalog all in one shot. And it's done very, very nicely. So I I have lots of examples of this. I just pulled one. So this is the Birds collection. Okay. So this is the complete Columbia Albums collection. It's a nice, I mean, it's literally the size of a regular CD, right? As far as height goes, of course, obviously it's a box. And it's one of these kind of clamshell thingamajiggies here where it opens Mm -hmm. up. You get a nice booklet, which basically describes everything that you're going to get in the box set, which you Mm -hmm. you love this. Right. You know, and and when we might, you know, show some other examples of this sort of thing that don't work so well. Um, and then you get all of the individual albums that are basically like mini LP records. That's beautiful. Hard cardboard sleeves, as opposed right. to some that we see that are these real flimsy things. And some of these are gate folds, right? I'm not going to show pull them all out, but they basically replicate the original uh, Columbia pressings of the of the vinyl, oh, right? Nice. Everything on the front and back is exactly the same. So they're basically, you know, mini LPs. And here, and you get the printing looks good on it. Like it's it's very legible, even though it's at CD size. You can still read what's on the back of those. Yeah, exactly. You know, you get. Oh, there you go. Yeah, at the gatefold. So you know, again, if if you're new to a band and you want for a good price to be able to get it all or a good chunk of their recorded work all in one nice little box set i mean these are great um and and i like the fact that they try to keep it as uh as authentic to the original releases as possible so and and again they're not a weird shape other than the fact that they're fat right this is still right. the same size basically as a regular cd right so if yeah. you go, go to put them on the shelf they will fit on the shelf so so yeah so this is i have tons of things like this and yeah. again it's great when you're someone like you know, our in our age group who maybe missed out on some of these great bands back mm-hmm. in the day, and then you think, oh, I got to go out and buy ten CDs now or ten pieces of vinyl. Uh, you can actually get a box set, which is a really fair price. This was not a lot of money, and you basically get everything all in one shot. So that's a I love these things for discovering bands catalogs much much later after the fact. That always works out well. So back to you. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with you on that. I don't have uh, one of those uh, here, but. Uh, Alan Parsons project was a band that I did that with that I didn't know much about. I'd never gotten into Then I found the connection to Pink Floyd and I decided to explore and I liked one of the albums. And then I thought, well, I now I really want to get everything. And they had one of those clamshell boxes that I was able to get. So um, I was able to dive into it. What I also like about those is that in today's world of streaming, uh, a lot of these albums are not all available to stream. So kids go on, they're screaming, they see that there's 10 albums, they really love it. They run into me, you know, kid at work or something like that. And he's, oh, my favorite band is this. I love the 10 albums. I'm like, what are you talking about? There's 19. (laughs) And they don't realize there's so much more out there a lot of times that isn't just, you know, streaming or whatever. And then so these CD reissue box sets put those things back in print. And even when they're not available uh, to stream as the individual album, a lot of times that box set will also appear and you'll get it in that way as well. But I just exactly. like getting those albums back out to the fans, whether new or old. Exactly. Exactly. That's a good point. Yeah. All right. So uh, this one here, 
initially I would have said way too overpriced. I'm not doing it. It is a rip off. <laughs> then I broke down and I bought it and I opened it and I completely changed my tune and it was worth every penny. <laughs> So Kiss Creatures of the Night box. Uh, I, I think this was that. 250, maybe even 300. I can't remember. I think it maybe it was priced at 300. And I got it for 250. Um, this is five CDs that's in here. I'll show you the back side of this thing. I also do like this when the bands put the stuff. This is you know part of the actual box. So yes. as opposed to uh, like the Pink Floyd one, which was just a black back, but I can flip it over and see the stuff. But five CDs uh, released to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the band demos outtakes uh instrumental versions live versions on here but there was a bunch of unreleased uh demos from paul stanley gene simmons that never made the album and only th i think there was like 12 that had never made it onto a kiss album or one of their solo albums and so getting this box and getting that material as a hardcore kiss fan was just a dream for me but like i said this thing was really expensive um and then i opened the thing up and yeah i wanted those those demos that's what did it for me it was like i right, i'm gonna just have to break down and buy it um but you get right on top is really nice big book done very well again plenty of stuff to read in here but big photos of the band you can just sink into it it's like having a vinyl in front of you you know the the gatefold or whatever it is but i mean again see how dense all of that is that's in here so it's a really nice beautiful book and then there's more stuff that that's in here and again they do uh got tour book that's in here now this is probably actually maybe even roughly the size that it originally was yeah um, but they've got uh this that's a folder it has way more memorabilia than anyone could possibly want and that i would say would be if if i were you know i could also talk about this one in a negative aspect because how much am i paying for just to get all of this memorabilia that's in here true but as a kiss fan when i opened this thing and i popped that disc on and i was looking through this i mean the grin that was on my face was ridiculous <laughs> and even with the amount of uh money that i spent on, on it i was so happy in the end of the day i'm not going to pull this out but this is just more it's one of those things that unfolds and there's special cards inside and then the discs are in the bottom you also get you know buttons and patches one of the things that always gets me is if i get guitar picks but i want real guitar picks not uh the credit card ones that are like the punch out they got to be the ones that i have seen on tour um and then you get the individual uh discs in these sleeves and so this one up top this was the the money one for me which was all of the demos in there um 16 tracks on one disc 18 on another and like i said i think it was 11 or 12 of these uh had never been released and i don't when i say never released i don't just mean unreleased like an alternate version of a song i mean a song they wrote recorded it is no song on any other album kind of thing. And if I can get that kind of content, it's like having an entire new Kiss album. They haven't made anything now in more than a decade. So it sort of felt like this was all I'm going to get from them. So I shelled out for it, but I absolutely love this box. <laughs> and, and it's not surprising that it's Kiss, that it's cost more than most of the other box sets of its kind, right? I mean, that's absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, each one of their bears that, they, you know, things like this that they've done so far, you know, the the one where they did the guitar case version, and that was an overview of their career. And it did have a lot of rare and unreleased stuff, but, you know, that was astronomically priced too. Yeah. Um, and of course, we, we just keep, uh, we keep paying for it. I know. I thought so, about that one because I do like it, that album a lot. And I was like, eh, I, I held off, but it, that's a lot of goodies in there, man. It's there's like, a lot of good stuff in this. <laughs> All right, so here's one a little bit on the rare side. Uh, this is not from a band that most people probably have ever heard of, um, but I I like when record labels, even small record labels, will do like a cool box set for a kind of obscure band. So the, the band is called Nice. Yeah, Bang. 
right? So oh, this is kind of like an obscure early. I season. want that so bad. Yeah. I missed out on it, and I've never been able to find it. Uh, yeah, this is this is really cool because I I am a sucker for like seventies heavy rock bands. I just yeah. proto metal bands, proto early metal bands. bands, right? So for those who don't know, I've talked about Bang a lot on the channel here, but this is a band from Pennsylvania that later later relocated to Miami, who were signed to a major label in the early seventies. They were meant to be the American Black Sabbath. They kind of have a vibe of like Sabbath meets Grand Funk Railroad meets the Beatles. They do these kind of nice harmonies. Uh, they released three albums on a major label, then were dropped, then broke up. They've now recently gotten back together. They released a new album like a month or so ago. Um, right. But the cool thing about this is that uh, Rise Above Relics, Rise Above Records is, of course, the uh, record label from the UK by, uh, that's been put together by Lee Dorian of Cathedral. And uh, he releases all sorts of cool stuff, new bands, older bands, uh, a lot of stuff from the vaults. So what he did was he worked out a deal to release the three albums that were on major label. I believe they were on CBS, if I remember correctly, one CBS or Columbia. And so they're all here. But in addition, mm -hmm. and this is the this whole part of the bank story, they did an album originally called uh, Death of a, of a Country which was the the album that they did that they gave to the label to say, okay, now that we're signed, here's the album. And the label were like, yeah, that album's not going to work for us. Uh, we need you to go back <laughs> to the studio and put something else together. So they were like, okay. <laughs> so they went and did the self-titled Bang album, which is great. Meanwhile, the original album sat on the shelf in the vaults for like a million years. Well, now with this box set, you get not only the three official releases, mm -hmm. you get the first for the first time ever officially released Death of a Country, which is released uh, now on CD. And it comes in, you know, they're all here. Nice. And they're all in like, you know, mini LP replica type of things, right? Nice, sturdy cardboard. Uh, you get uh, you know, all, the, all the albums are here. Yeah. Plus you get a booklet. Right, which is always nice and and this basically basically gives you the history of the band uh, mm -hmm. and assorted other things there's other goodies in here as well right. yeah, brendan if you can find this i would highly recommend tracking it down um, yeah i'm gonna have to I, I like i said i've been keeping an eye out for it i've uh i bought the debut album i finally found that on a cd and jewel case uh form i did buy the brand new one but i didn't realize there was an unreleased album in there so now i want it even more so very nice. cool sticker too right so there's all sorts of little goodies in here but yeah this is uh this is an amazing little collection of a very you know somewhat obscure band uh like i said they never really made it even though they were on a major label they didn't really make it big at all they toured with all the big bands of the day but uh, they're kind of like uh you know an unknown band for most people but terrific stuff you know high-pitched vocals big heavy riffs some of it's really heavy some of it's kind of very melodic um you know, the the Bang album, self-titled album, is probably the best, although uh, uh, Mother Bow to the King, the second album, is really, really good. And the, the thing about the, the the unreleased album, Death of a Country, is like it's a concept album, and oh, it's wow. kind of different than the other albums in a weird way. It's almost proggy in spots, very, very different. So for those of watching uh, who never listened to Bang, if the, the whole concept of Black Sabbath meets Grand Funk Railroad meets the Beatles sounds enticing, I highly urge you to check out Bang. Uh, like I said, you can probably still find this somewhere. If not, like Brendan said, you could probably track down some of the individual albums on CD or vinyl. So, uh, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. And, and the band reformed and just put out a new album, So, uh, which I think is excellent. So I would actually recommend that too. If you can't get anything else, that's definitely worth checking out. Yeah. And see what they're sounding like today, you know? So it's, uh, I believe it's on purple pyramid or Cle no, Cleopatra oh, records. It's Cleopatra, all yeah. Cleopatra, yeah. Cool. All right. Your last choice in the, uh, the good column, I the guess. Good category. All right. Um, so I've already mentioned some stuff with Springsteen and, uh, things. So of course I got to have one of these in here. I guess now that I moved to New Jersey, I, uh, also need to represent, right? <laughs> um, so this is uh, The Ties That Bind. Uh, this is his fifth studio album that he did, but now uh, deluxe edition of it. One of the things that I liked about this one was that, uh, of course, you get the double original double album uh, in here remastered, but they did a single disc. So at the time when it was debated as to whether or not it would be the double or it was going to be a single. They did do an edited down version for it. Um, it did come out as the double, but I've always been fascinated with what would this have been had it been a single disc. So that's in here. 
But then there's also another disc in here of all the outtakes. And Springsteen, a lot like Jethro Tull, when he goes into the studio, records ridiculous amounts of stuff. And for this, and even for a couple of the other box sets, uh, Darkness on the Edge of Town and stuff, he took those unreleased tracks and even ones that weren't completed, went in and did new vocal or whatever to finish them off. So it's sort of a cross between, you know, historical content, you know, um, from Vault, that sort of stuff, and new at the same time. And again, that just, it's an extra factor for me, uh, getting basically another new Springsteen album. Um, you also get uh, two Blu-ray discs that are in here and um, lots and lots of video content, a documentary that was shot just for this. So I also so like that when um, box sets come out and there's a DVD or Blu-ray in there with a documentary or something that is solely done for this. So I, you know, you've never seen it. It's not just an old live show or something, but you get something new there. Um, this is... Uh, how they hold the discs. They also get uh, uh, lyrics and things like that in here. But so it comes out separate from the hardcover book. They leave the hardcover book as is, discs are not in there. You get them here. And then, I'm gonna pull one of these out. They're actually in the individual sleeves. So those rarities outtakes, 22 of which, I can just take this and go listen to this as a Bruce Springsteen album. And I don't necessarily have to have the river and everything else uh, with me but i could also just pull all of these things out and uh sit there and listen to them and i don't have to have this huge thing so i again i think nicely done there but then you get this absolutely beautiful book done a little bit differently uh than the other ones you know you'd expect it to open this way kind of a thing um just full of uh photos in here not as much uh writing I think there's a little something at the beginning or the end. I can't remember, but it's basically a coffee table picture book of everything. Uh, for all that information and stuff like that is the documentary that comes along with it. Um, but just another person I think does box sets right. Uh, I was almost going to pull Darkness on the Edge of Town, but ultimately went with this one here. Uh, just getting that alternate edition of an album. If it's a double album like I've always wondered uh, the U2, you know, Guns N' Roses Use Your Illusion albums one and two. I would love to know what a single disc version of that, you know, would have been. I'm sure they explored it at one point. They've never done that though. But I think, you know, there's missed opportunities when bands have double albums or even triple albums to edit it down. You know, put a version of that out. See see what that's like because it's it's a whole new listening experience. You know, if you know the album inside and out, and you're used to another track coming right after it. Based and you on hear the sequencing, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm a big fan of that, getting an alternate edition where the sequencing is changed to remix, stuff like that. Yeah, the, al the alternate version of the album, right? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the what could have been. <laughs> right. It's like with Bang, you know, the box you just showed having that unreleased album, mentioning that you said it's con concept album, it's a little more proggy. What if the label had accepted that the, the material that came after it might not have sounded that way. They may have gone into more of a prog, you know, type thing, doing more concept albums and stuff like that. Sure. So to me, it's that what if. Yeah. I, I love it. Box sets that give me that. So much fun to just contemplate and explore in your mind what could have been. Yeah, yeah. Well, that 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 kind of is a kind of a cool segue from my last uh, choice here and I, I pull three of them out to kind of make the same point because they all do the same thing so over the years especially like in the 70s we had these great live albums right yeah and in many cases some of these great live albums were culled from tracks from different shows maybe recorded on one whole weekend or a week's worth of shows and what they do is they take two songs from night one, a song from night mm -hmm. two, and so on and so on. And they give you this live album. It's like, whoa, here you got representative of these shows, right? Mm -hmm. But then, you know, you start, you stop to think, it's like, well, what happened during the other rest of the shows? I mean, were, were those performances no good, right? So right. we have albums like uh, Jimi Hendrix and the Band of Gypsies. Right. And we have that classic Band of Gypsies album from that weekend at the Fillmore East, right? New Year's mm -hmm. Eve, but it's not everything. It's just, it's, cherry pick from those all those shows mm -hmm. so then years later we get you know songs from groovy children which basically is the entire performances from the whole weekend 
And what's really cool about something like this is then you, if you know the original Band of Gypsies album really, really well, you go and you listen to night one, you know, or they play two shows a day, right? So mm -hmm. you listen to the afternoon show or the early evening show, the late evening show, and then you're listening and you're like, oh yeah, that's the version that made it to the Band of Gypsies, <laughs> that version of Machine Gun or that version of this or whatever. So here, you know, for the fans who want everything, because you, mm -hmm. you know there's no bad performance, right? You get the whole thing. Same thing with uh, Frank Zappa, Roxy and elsewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Frank Zappa and the Mothers played the the rock a whole bunch of dates at the Roxy. Uh, you have the one live album, but again, that's pieced from different performances from each night. Now all of a sudden, yeah. you've got what is this? Seven discs of every show from yeah. that one at the Roxy, right? More Roxy than you'll ever need. Same thing with UFO Strangers in the Night, right? So that's here, the one I was going to talk. Yeah. So here, you know, you've got again eight discs from that whole run of shows mm -hmm. that the original strangers of the night recordings were taken from. So right. again, what's kind of cool for us fans, we know these albums really, really well as you go listen to all of this. So we're going to listen to Ohio and Wisconsin and Columbus and Kentucky and blah, 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 blah. And you listen and you're like, yeah, that's the version of mm -hmm. natural thing from the original album. Right. So either that's the version of lights out or that's the version of rock bottom. Right. And it's kind of cool now to hear all these performances and then you stop to think it's like well did they really pick the best ones from these these nights yeah. Yeah, but that's <laughs> the, that's what you need to decide right but, but now you right. have everything so in a sense you can make up your your new version of strangers of the night based on everything that's in here right so yeah well another thing that's cool about the strangers box there is that when they did the remastered cds and they added bonus tracks they put the tracks into uh, the mix of the original track listing yeah. uh, running order that throws me off that's not the way the album used to be so in the box there they go back to the original two lp and they split it on the cds to make it a double and yeah. i really like that you got that version of it yep back in print uh without the bonus tracks and then essentially those bonus tracks are now the other uh discs that are in there right Right. Yeah. I actually got you when they re released Strangers of the Night with the additional tracks. I, because I had the original and then another version and I bought that. I got very used to having with those, with those extra tracks. But yeah, you're absolutely right. When you grew up with a certain album, a certain way, you put it on, you expect to see, you know, everything the way you remember it. And then all of a sudden, oh, wait, that song doesn't come first. Right. right. But you think about, well, it kind of makes sense that it's now first. But yeah, they mess with the, that, that's, that goes back to the whole thing we were talking about how you know you don't want to mess with history right you want mm -hmm. to leave it the way it was originally released and intended but sometimes people don't care about that because oh well i want it to be representative of the set that they played live every night right and if that song came first on a nightly basis why shouldn't it be first on the live album the live albums would actually change it right so right. there's like two ways of thinking about that but yeah all right uh we're going to move on to the stuff that maybe doesn't work so well, but I, I pulled it out here just in case uh, we duplicated anything. But I, I do want to give a quick mention to the Wishbone Ash Argus box set, which is just absolutely gargantuan. And again, this is the way you do a box set where you give people everything. And I'm not so you're saying this is this is still one of the good ones. Yeah, I only I brought it out because as in case we duplicated something, oh, I had okay. something else to grab, but I'm going to I'm going to put it aside. But yeah, this is. I've shown that I did a whole unboxing of this on the channel and this, this nice. is the way you do a box. I mean, it's got, it's got the vinyl, it's got the CDs, it's uh -huh. got the booklets. I mean, it's ridiculous. So yeah. And, but again, this is one of those, where do you put this, right? Cause it's so enormous. Yeah. Uh, if you're, if you're not a vinyl collector right now, you've got this whole box set with all this stuff that you probably won't listen to, but for the, you know, for the serious music fans, something like that, because it gives you every version. That's just absolutely spectacular all right with that yeah. uh, i'll turn it back over to brendan to uh take us into the start off on, on one i dislike yeah. all right so um first one up for me uh and things that uh we talked about what makes a good box set but things that make a not so good box set are things that uh, we think could be done better even if the box set isn't bad right. uh it could be better right one of the things that i hate is putting quality putting material on that's not up to par very subpar recording quality, tape hiss, uh, bootleg that has really bad crowd noise where you can barely hear the band um, or, you know, the drums are too loud in the mix or just whatever, but they're really sort of scraping the bottom of the barrel. 
And I felt that was the case with the Alice Cooper old school box set. Um, you know, spanning the original career, 64 to 74 of the band, I thought this is great. The, you know, the original group, you're getting stuff. Uh, tons of this was unreleased. It's got uh, pre-Alice Cooper band material on here. It's got demos, um, pre-production recordings, live stuff. But it also throws in things like radio ads. And you're listening to the music and it's sort of like, I don't want to break the flow of, of what I'm hearing to get a radio ad in there or some uh, studio banter that really has no place. I mean, it's kind of cool, like being a fly on the wall. Uh, the Doors did it with a couple of their box sets where they just took the entire recording process of a particular song for like an hour. I think it was on the, the LA Woman uh, box set that they recently did. And, um, or maybe it's more person hotel, but it's cool to hear once, maybe twice, but I'm not going to be going back to it. You'll never and listen. I sort of felt that way with this. This is four CDs that's in this version of it. And, um, you know, they did it well in the sense of sort of like the Jethro Toll, um, you know, boxes that, you know, has a really good book that's inside the discs are in here. And I separately, I'd probably complain about these just, you know, not having their own sleeves and whatnot. And one disc touching the other disc I don't like. So there's a little bit of that. But aside from that, I bought this one, the super deluxe edition one that is a school desk that actually opens up and then has all of the stuff that's in it. So I spent, you know, 250 bucks or so to get this thing. And then I listened to the quality of it and realized it was something I was rarely if ever going to go back to and listen to. And so just absolutely bummed out uh, getting something from an artist that I love so much. And I was super excited and thought, you know, you know, here, here I'm getting something that I'm going to be diving into and enjoying for, you know, weeks. And I was kind of done and over with it, you know, the first day. Yeah, that that really sucks. Yeah, yeah, that really sucks. When you have that anticipation, you go through all this and it's like, ah, none of this is worth diving back into more than once or twice. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. That's that's kind of kind of how I felt with this. Um, so. I've always, I don't know if you've ever heard of a, a band called Frost. They are a yeah. uh, UK kind of progressive rock band. So mm -hmm. I, uh, I've i always kind of liked their music, but never really bought a lot of their stuff. And then I, I was like, yeah, you know what? I want to go and, and get all their albums because I, I like them. Mm -hmm. And then I find out that most of their CDs are out of print. And I'm like, oh, yeah. all right. I know, right. But then I found out, oh, but there's a box set that has, uh, you know, the first uh, four. So I was like, cool all right i'll go order that and i looked it up online and uh, also it's pretty rare it's hard to get I, I saw a couple sellers that had it so I, I wound up ordering one and i was looking at the description i'm like okay it's just said it's a box set i'm like cool whatever and then it shows up mm -hmm. and i get one of these things okay which uh i'm not a fan of yeah so here you have you know the album million town remastered uh, experiment and mass appeal remix and remastered you get falling satellites remastered you get uh, the instrumental versions of falling satellites remastered you get a live album you get the ep you get the philadelphia experiments b-sides a lot of cool stuff is in here mm -hmm. but i am not a fan of this yeah there's no album art that's a, my big thing is and, and we as collectors having these albums on our walls like this you want to be able to open that up, look at the album art, and when it's just a disc. Yeah. And, and is I it, don't really, and this is mostly uh, photographs and lyrics. And just lyrics. Yeah. There's yeah. a little bit of info and then more of this. Yeah. And I was just kind of like, and, and again, as someone who is not a vinyl person, I'm a CD guy. Mm -hmm. Where the hell do I put this? <laughs> right. It fit on any of my shelves. You're going to have to put it with your vinyl stuff or, or that other Argus box. Yeah, it goes in my closet where and I'll never access this. So basically all I did with this is I, you know, added it all to my iTunes, put it on my iPod and I have the music, so I can't complain about that. But mm -hmm. like you, I like to pull CDs out and I like, you know, and I can't do that with this. And I don't care to because this is clumsy. It's big. And, you know, you hit on it so perfectly right there. It's clumsy. Yeah, I feel that way about a lot of these. This, the Alice Cooper one I just showed you, you know, to look like a desk, it's got these overhanging corners. It's sloped on this side. This doesn't fit anywhere. I can't put it with any box set. So it just sits on top of stuff. Yeah. And it's 
always out of place. It's and it's clumsy to operate. Yeah, that's no good. Yeah. I mean, I thought this was going to come in something like this, which would have been mm-hmm. fantastic. And this right. shows up in the mail. First of all, I get this like you know big LP box, and I'm like, I didn't order any vinyl. <laughs> I'm like, ah, this is the frost. I'm like, geez, I mean, it's like disappointment in a major way. So yeah, yeah, those are no fun. No fun. No good. All right, this is a, a new one that just came out, and while there's certainly good qualities about this. It was a major disappointment. The new Stevie Nicks box set, complete album. So you mentioned that you thought the frost was going to come in the size like Bang or the Birds. And I thought that's what this was. So I get this. And, and like you said, and it comes in, I'm like, why is this thing so big? You know, um, it does have her eight studio albums on this, uh, which I already own. So I was a little bummed about that, but some of the later ones get a remaster on it. So that's nice. I bought it for uh, the two CDs, the rarities that are on here. And it collects together all of the um, soundtrack recordings. They're all completed songs. They're not alternate takes or demos. They're real completed songs from B-sides, soundtrack, stuff like that. So well worth it, in my opinion, for two CDs of that. I shelled out whatever this cost. I don't even remember at this point. 70s 80s maybe higher maybe it's over 100 <laughs> um but i knew that when i was getting it so not not a big deal it arrives it's a little bit bigger and i'm kind of like okay that's not going to fit anywhere either because you know i was expecting it to, to fit on my wall there which i designed for those smaller size boxes yeah. so that i can display them because like you said for so long when i was living in new york city in an apartment i didn't have anywhere to store those they were in boxes mm-hmm. so i never accessed them now that I've made space for them on top of my shelves, I pull them out all the time. And I'm like, oh, I've got it. Now my thing is I've got to get other big boxes out because like you, those are in closets because there's just nowhere to put them. Mm-hmm. But I received this. I'm already a little disappointed because I had to shell out just to get the rarities, but okay. Um, bigger box than I was thinking, but again, okay. So I opened the thing up. And I see this, I don't know if you own this one or not, but I'm thinking this is a book and it's not. It's just a piece of cardstock. Doesn't even have any information about the album. There's nothing. Why is this even in here? Yeah, it's just gotcha. jacking up the cost of it, right? Yeah. Right. Then look at how they did this. There's all this cardboard around here. They didn't make these any bigger. There's, there's nothing bonus. There's no memorabilia. There's nothing in here. So that so could have been in something this size. It could have been. So Absolutely. Yeah. And then you get the actual album. So, okay, great. Tons of albums. You get the art that's in here. They're gatefold. But this is a flimsy piece of paper. It's not even the, the double thickness that is the one that holds the disc that's in here. The discs are on the inside here. So already making it a little harder to get to with no special protection than if it was here. Yeah. That's nice, it doesn't fall out, I get that. This one, you can't read that. <laughs> I mean, if I get under a light and I get really close to it, I can read it. But it's it's pressed, I mean, the information, it's just like, oh my God, I understand why you didn't make a book because it's right here, but I can't read it. And there's no spine. So it also has no information on this. When these are upright, I can't even take these out and enjoy it in that regard. The one double that's in here, this is the rarities disc, does have a spine and still nothing's written on it. Doesn't say anything. So I was glad that I could pull this out, just listen to this separate from the box. I didn't have one of those big ones like Frost, but I get no information. I mean, this says what the track is and whether it was a B-side or a soundtrack or something but there's no book that explains those tracks and where they really come from or generated or whatnot. I, you know, I've got all this question about this great music that I'm hearing and nothing to get answers from. So this one here was, was a big letdown in that regard. Um, but I will say this on most of these things, you know, always do your homework and know what you're getting. I knew I was spending extra money to get this. Once I found out that those songs did not appear only a couple repeated between uh, the deluxe editions of Wild Heart and forget the uh, Belladonna. Um, and that the stuff that was on here was not demos and things like that. I decided it was worth shelling out for kind of the same way I did the um, Kiss box set. 
but to get it and for it to be the big letdown, yeah. you know, and in, in packaging the quality of it, just why? Yeah. I have sometimes like, if I don't jump on a box set that I'm interested in, like right away, yeah, I'll go online. I'll go onto like YouTube and I'll, cause there's always someone who buys it in the same day they do an unboxing and I'll go watch a video and see if that's something that I really want to invest the money in. Cause sometimes I've seen some of these videos and people are showing it off and talking about what's on there. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't look what I expect. That's not what I expected it to be. Right. I think I'm going to hold off on that. Right. So mm-hmm. sometimes you get, that's the kind of research you have to do, unfortunately. Absolutely. And I mean, I know a lot of you guys out there that are watching us right now do that for both our channels uh wait until we do those reviews or those unboxings for them on it and we're kind of the guinea pigs sometimes yeah and it's, absolutely but, so what, what we're yeah. complaining about you guys do at home right when you're watching <laughs> yeah i don't know about that one Pardo just showed it off and i don't think i'm gonna get that it's like well that's, that's right. Fine, right at least you have that uh ability to research something before you buy yeah. before you make yeah. that purchase and you're disappointed ultimately so yeah all right, so this next Sometimes one, I'm, I'm buying these things just to be completists, right? You know, I don't know how, how you are, but it's not, I I need certain things in the collection regardless, yeah. and so I may decide to shell out just because I want it in the collection. Yeah, I've done that plenty of times, and that that's the curse is real, right? That's called the curse yeah, of the collector, right. right? Yeah. It's... <laughs> All right, so if you remember in the '90s when box sets really first started to become pretty popular. Uh, they were always kind of weird shapes. They were like narrow and yeah. tall. And again, yep. it, this this complaint is more about the packaging because the content is great. Okay. Uh, it is uh, Bruce Springsteen tracks. <laughs> I almost picked this one. <laughs> yeah, this is dynamite because this is yeah. like, if you're a Springsteen fan, especially fan of this stuff like in the 70s and the early 80s, and you want all the rare stuff, it's all on here. Yeah. This is jam packed with four discs of all the rare Springsteen stuff you'll ever want. But this is this this is a 90s mess right here, right? Right. So yeah. It, it's tall. As you can see, I don't know how well you can tell, but from because I have nowhere to really put this, it's already kind of warped and yeah. whatever. And then you open it up and you get this ridiculousness. Yeah. Right? So absolutely. Here you have this would have been good if we could take these out. Right, mm-hmm. these, these would fit on a shelf, right? Yeah, yeah. They have spines. There's nothing written on the spine, but they're all attached, right? right? Yeah. And how many times I can't tell you how many I'm looking through these and one of them falls out, and then you, you open it up this way, and there's the rest of them, and then you got this booklet, but the booklet comes out and the booklet is big, and it's just like it's it's the content is fantastic, right? Right. You know, now I'm, I'm struggling to just kind of keep this flat, and <laughs> right. it's just so unwieldy and just awkward. yeah and it doesn't have a real spine it's it's no. glued in a way where you can't actually open it lay it flat and read it so as collectors we're always kind of don't want to open that book all the way up you know yeah. i don't have mine out but i was going to pick it for content and then i'd like you exactly. i decided that the packaging didn't really hold up overall so it wasn't going to be you know high enough in my my list to do that what I saw in yours is not happening in mine. The black trays, the glue, because uh, I kept mine vertical, has started to slide down. <laughs> so it sticks out from the bottom of there like an inch. And, you know, I've, I've taken it very slowly with my thumbs and I just push it back because it's just rubbery glue. But the problem is it keeps going back to that. So I actually started storing it upside down so that it'll slowly fall back into the place. Other way. <laughs> And I, I've had, I, I have others here of this, you know, like, you know, I just, I wasn't going to show this one, but here's the King Crimson yeah, uh, Great Deceiver box set. In fact, it's the same problem, except right. this one actually does open up. And does and it I have jewel case it. inside though? It yeah. does, but like, they're kind of unremarkable, right? So right. there's no booklet, was, it's just plain. Yeah, they're just plain. So what I did was, uh, I can probably point to them. I don't know if you can see, but up there on my shelf, they re-released yeah. these within nice CD jewel cases with cool artwork right. and stuff. So I went and bought them again. So <laughs> I have this in the closet and I have those, which are the one. It's like, again, why would I waste money on that? Because this is so, this is great content. Fantastic. Yeah. Probably one of the best box sets ever of a product. Yeah. Amazing. But this is just clunky and just, 
it drives me crazy. Yeah, it doesn't need to be that big. And no. um, sort of case in point, I don't know if they did it with that one, but well, here, this is, right? I already showed this one, but they released it this way, right? Yeah. So like the King Crimson box you just had, uh, Aerosmith's Pandora Toys yes. would later get a version like this. It also got one in the Fat Boy case um, like that. Fleetwood Mac uh, did it for, their, I think it was called The Chain, 25 years. That box set, same thing. It eventually got slimmed down. So a lot of companies have taken those 90s era box sets and put them into things like this or even smaller. Um, and then that's what's happened. I like, I have the box still, but it was unwieldy and it's in my closet. And then I've gone and I bought the smaller edition of it <laughs> to have that. And like you, if they put out remastered versions with bonus tracks and killer booklets, I buy the jewel cases too. Yeah. It's never they, ends. they know what it's never gonna ends. us hardcore fans are gonna go out and buy these things. Yeah, well and that's why they keep doing them. Until the day yeah. comes where even people like us say enough is enough, right. they will keep printing these different versions of it. It's just what they do. So well I don't know about you, but I have started uh, saying enough is enough on some box sets. So like the recent Rolling Stone reissue box sets for Tattoo You, um, is it called Goat's Head Soup? I always get them confused. But those different albums that came out that had, you know, they were $150 box sets. They were vinyl size because they had the vinyl in it. And then they had the two or three CDs that were in it. Oftentimes, no additional content other than what was the two CD edition of it that came out just in regular cardboard packaging that fits on my shelf. I want the box set, but I want the content. And they're not doing that. And I've had to, I didn't buy those. And I'm a big box set fan. I have over 350 box sets. I love that stuff. And there's actually getting to a point where I'm saying, not buying that one. And it's killing me because as a completist, I want it in my collection, including somewhere, um, you know, I own these by this artist and I chose not to buy these other ones by the artist because they weren't doing anything. The White Snake ones, same way. He did some other box sets, the Unzipped, but I had all of that content on single CD editions. I didn't need the group together box set of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's, you know, they'll try to get you any way they can and uh, but I have had to put my foot down and stop buying some of these things. I don't think it's hurting the sales. I think there's plenty of people out there that are still going to do it. Yeah, they're just going to buy it blind regardless. And, and yeah. again, you know, I, I've done that many times myself, too. But yeah, sometimes you just have to be like, do I really need this? Is yeah. this really giving me anything other than what I already have? And that's what it comes down to. Right. So. All right. So uh, similar to what you just showed there with the King Crimson and the... Um, Bruce Springsteen being these 90s era ones. This was actually 2002 uh, from Yes called In A Word. Huge Yes fan. Um, and I, I did love this. Do love this, I'll say. Uh, it is one of the career spanning retrospective ones. Um, five discs are in here, but it's only got, let me just, uh, find my notes real quick. Uh, six unreleased songs. Everything else on here on the albums. So it's a cool career spanning thing. If you're a fan, new fan to Yes, you know, getting something like this is nice. But there just wasn't enough content on this for the hardcore fan to, to really be like, I'm pulling this thing out regularly. I'm listening to it. And, you know, like the other one, open it up here. I do like, same in the, in the Bruce Springsteen, that the, if I can get it out, the book is separate. So I can pull the book out separate from this thing and enjoy it. Uh, of course, I love uh, the Roger Dean art. Anytime I can just get extra beautiful and art. And that's, I was just going to say, that might be reason for so many fans to buy this just because it has new Roger Dean artwork, right? Yeah. Even though absolutely. you have everything that's on there already multiple times, but it's like, oh, but this looks great, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but again, you know, we're getting, uh, they're in these flaps and they're in, uh, you know, jewel case disc sleeves where, you know, if that thing breaks or pops, then what do I do? I have nothing to put that in. Yeah. And then because it was five discs, they have a void. Okay. You get a piece of the art, but I mean, you could have put, I don't know, a poster or something, a little pull out something here. I don't know. Add a DVD for Christ's sake. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I do, do, did, I don't know, enjoy this at the time when I bought it. I loved it. Um, this had, um, uh, trying to remember the the track on here. I can't find it fast enough. But um, it la they later took it and turned it into uh, a whole album. Um, 
the return, what is it called? Return, <laughs> return flight was the, the redo of it, but it was, um, the album that they did when they brought Trevor Horn back in. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Jeff uh, Downs came fly back. From, fly from here. Yeah. Fly from, fly here. from here. Thank you. Where they then pulled a song, but that song, um, or it's actually not on here. Sorry. It's actually on the live box set, but you know, when they do something like that, where they have a completely unreleased song that was from back in the day, I dig that, but when there's only a few of them on there and then they're like interspaced, if you give me a whole disc of unreleased material, even if it's only five tracks, but you put it all there and I can just pop that disc on, it's so much better than interspacing one here, one there, where I got to listen to the whole disc to get to that one song that I really want to sink my teeth into. Yeah, yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah, I I never even gave that one a, a, any thought of buying. I've got so much Yes stuff and Yes box sets. I'm like, right. And I love the band, but man, it's like after a while, it's like, holy cow. It's like, when is, again, when is enough enough, right? Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I chose not to buy the Progeny box, the 72, you know, concert series that they did. Yeah. I wanted it, but it was astronomically priced. They're virtually the same set list from every show that's in there. There wasn't anything kind of bonus about it. Uh, they put out a highlights disc. So get that. Yeah. That's what I have. <laughs> That's what I bought. Uh, all right. Another uh, weird shaped box. But again, one I jumped all over because I love this band so much. And I'm like, I have to have everything they've ever done, including Scraping the Barrel by Gentle Giant. Oh. That's exactly what this is called, yeah. Scraping the Barrel. So, this, <laughs> And does it sound like that, too? Well, <laughs> this was one of those uh, play it once or twice and then done type of thing. So hey, oh. it's weird packaging, right? So you got, yep. so here you got the the booklet is also this long thing, right? Which kind of explains everything uh -huh. that's in here. And these are just basically like alternate mixes and mm. just there's really nothing in here that's like, wow, I can't believe I have that. The book is probably it's like the Death Row Toll Box, where you get all these recordings that they did, and you hear something, you go, "Oh my God, why was that never released?" Right. This yeah. is just yeah. These are like, you know, vocal mixes, instrumental mixes, alternate takes, and again, it, it covers like, and there's there's a ton of stuff on here, but mm -hmm. it's just like a ton of stuff that you'll listen to once or twice and never go back to. And again, as a completist, I'm happy I have it, but. I, I haven't listened to this in 10 years. Yeah. Maybe more. I don't even know. Uh, when did this come out? I don't even remember when this came out. Uh, early 2000s, maybe? 2004? Yeah, 2004. I haven't listened to this in 15 years, easily. <laughs> and it, you know, because, again, it's like there's, yeah. a, there's a cool, odd fascination factor about it. But that doesn't mean that this is like something you would put on and say, oh, wow, cool. That, that's interesting to hear that like vocal -less version of Peel the Paint, right? Which is right. one of my favorite songs, right? It, that's what it's like. It's just, it's instrumental mixes or a mix without keyboards or a mix without guitar or just here's just the vocal part. It, it's just, ugh. yeah. again, for the completist, you want to have it. Sure. But like, would I ever recommend anybody who's like a marginal gentle giant fan to get this? You don't need this. Yeah. Even, I wonder, do I even need this? Right. <laughs> I, but I got to have it. Right. So, right. Right. Well, as I always say, you, you don't need it, but you need it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Indeed. In, in that box set, did they have the alternate editions where, you know, track one is, is the song without vocal track two is the song without guitar, meaning that it one right after the other is the same song just done differently or are they spread out so here's so this is weird it's very bizarre so here like so you'll have uh it says three friends so it goes like album by album so here you'll have like from the three friends album you'll have a selection of the tracks so you'll have school days which is one of the songs just the piano in the studio and yep. it's like 40 something seconds then you'll have wow. the grand piano in the studio and that's like 50 seconds then you'll have working all day the full demo version all right but again it's only 50 something seconds then you'll have peel the paint with a different guitar solo and that's three minutes and change when the song is like seven minutes long yeah you'll get mr class and quality which just has the intro bits 
and all the solos that's like five minutes three frames mm -hmm. just with the piano different piano take and then they'll go to the octopus album so you'll have a, a studio outtake of one song you'll get from the power and the glory you'll have yeah. an alternate part a pickup mix an experimental mix a demo mix yeah. rehearsal take but if they're only like mix. 20 or 30 if they're only like 20 or 30 or not 20 but like 40 seconds 50 seconds or something then for me that's not even worth it i mean i'm not going to listen to a 50 second snippet it's all over the map there are some that yeah. are full songs but just different takes or mixes some of the uh, snippets and it's just right. it's crazy yeah and then you've got um trying to think one of them so then you've got a uh, the fourth disc is a data disc so this is going back a little ways oh right? wow <laughs> so you go on there and it's got hundreds of even more stuff like this i'm like i'm <laughs> never gonna i'm never gonna access that ever so yeah so this is like it's it's titled perfectly. Scraping the yeah. barrel is what it is. If you're a gentle giant completist, you got to have it. But I would never recommend this to <laughs> anybody who isn't like a massive fan. It's just, it's not needed. It's cool. Yeah. I got it. Right. Cause I can sit right. here and talk about it right now, but I'm like, like I said, I haven't listened to that in like 15 years. Cause it's like, yeah. I, you know, it's, the, 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 the songs that they released on the actual albums are the best versions. Those are the ones you want. While this stuff right. is a mild curiosity, that's what it is. It's a mild curiosity. So. Absolutely. I had uh, done a series on my channel that was uh, five favorite box sets or or one another one that was called Exploring My Box Sets. So like you said with that one that you hadn't touched in 10 years, part of me was thinking like I've got 350 box sets and I haven't pulled some of these out. I need to make them you know, useful, worthwhile. So I started a series around it so that I could pull them out, which was also great in that I revisited a lot of those yeah. during it. And then was glad that I had it, whereas when it's been sitting on the shelf and I'm looking at it, and I'm kind of saying, why, why do I even have that thing? And then I pop it on and I remember back when I purchased it, I was excited and happy when I got it. I was looking for more material by that band at that time. So it quelled that feeling of getting something new from my band. Put it on the shelf, you're not going to listen to it much, but it's it's history, it's time, it's it's nostalgia. It's uh, part of that uh, collecting process that, that we go through building these music libraries that we have. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, change. I would. I have a lot of stuff that's like that, too, that I say, ah, I'm, you know, this Alice Cooper, I'm not going back to kind of thing. But I'm not getting rid of it. Oh, you want to get rid of it? No, no. <laughs> I've got two versions of it, you know. So, <laughs> And the thing is, I bought this after I had the big box. So I already knew the quality was bad and I still bought it. I found it used for like 10 bucks. So I wasn't oh, shelling out. Yeah. So, I mean, I will do things like that uh, where I'll have the big box set and then I want the individual discs or something and I'll buy them used for, you know, next to nothing. So I'm not shelling out at least. There you go. All right. But on to, to, to my next uh, box set, and this is both a good and bad it's and i would say this is more just not done right kind of a thing but a lot of great qualities in it still uh def leppard's hysteria box super deluxe edition of this thing uh this is seven discs that are in here uh five cds two dvds and it's got everything from that era but uh the, the second is where it gets into the, the rarity stuff, the stuff that I would be interested in here, B-sides and remixes. And they've got two discs of that. And they mix up the B-sides and the remixes on those. Instead of just giving me a B-sides studio stuff of unreleased recordings, and when I say unreleased, you know, non-album, non I should say, recordings, and the remixes or single edits on another disc, I have to, you know listen through and skip past animal remix and skip past a hysteria remix to get to tear it down B side or something that I really want to hear. So I just feel that this box wasn't done right in the way that they organize things for the fans. Um, you then get something in here that's great. They put in, in the round, in your face, the live show, but that's the audio and that had not been available. So that was very cool, but they don't put the DVD in here. And I'm just sort of, I already have the DVD. I didn't need it. But why not put that in here also? I mean, if someone was buying this and that those DVDs are out of print at this point anyways, and they could could have put it in in Blu-ray. I don't know why it just maybe made the box cheaper because it's all in DVD. <laughs> so you don't get that, but you get 
um, visual hysteria in here, which is the one that had all of their music videos. So you do get that. And again, I already owned that on DVD. Of course, I had the VHSs back in the day, too. Um, so they did stick one of the DVDs that, you know, or VHS videos, home videos, I should call it, that came out at the time, but they didn't stick the other one. Then they stick in here uh, classic albums, the VH1 show that was on this, which we've all seen on TV, which also oh. sold independently. They stick that in here. Um, and then, you know, just interview stuff, stuff that I don't need. So this was just one of those things, you know, I have the, the two CD 20th anniversary edition. I have this deluxe edition. I've got the recent CD. I think they're just calling it um, CD collection volume, you know, volume one, volume two, volume three that are in the small boxes. Yep. They're finally being done right. Probably should have had one of those here to, to, to counter this. Um, but you know, I, I don't know. I have a six versions of this, I think, already. So all of the stuff that was on here, there was nothing on this that I didn't already own. But right. I got that live show. I didn't have that. Still, it's a good good thing. I mean, you get the book that's in here. Um, you get a, of course, this was one of the things that got me. I get the tour book that's in here. And it's actually the die cut version of it where that's, oh, that's the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, so they, they did, you know, at least actually recreated that. And it's on that photo quality paper. And you can see the how reflective that is. Yeah. Um, so again, like the tour books, um, some of those other ones that we've gotten the replica tour books on are just printed on regular paper. Um, you get a whole book of uh, photos from Ross Hau Hauflin uh, in here, which is very cool. You get a um, whole breakdown on the discography of every seven inch and single and version from Japan to UK to wherever that's in here. Um, poster, so that side of it. And then you get all the discs that are in here. And this still kind of bugs me just when there's the extra space that's in these. I wish there was a better way to do it because they get jostled around. I've even received it where these things have been dented and busted in because of during shipping, you know, and the shaking around. But you do get all of these individually in here. Um, so, I mean, that's cool. Each one of these is uh, done as a gatefold that's in here. And you can make the, uh, you know, if you put them all together, you can make the album art that's in it, which is cool, which is like the original uh, seven inch uh, collect. If you collected all the seven inches back in the day, uh, you could make the art for the album cover. So it is a cool box, but it's just got uh, seven disc worth of stuff that I don't really need. I kind of bought it for that live show, but I've got the live DVD of it already. So I shelled out for this thing that just sits on my shelf that really has just become. So usually I have this sitting in my background if I'm talking about Def Leppard. It looks so great, right? something, yeah, that looks good. That's there to alert people that, hey, this guy's going to talk about Def Leppard. And I've I've also, you know, found that as a use for my box sets. Again, trying to get more out of all this stuff, you know, money that I put into these things beyond just the listening. It's like, all right, let's put some on display, you know. <laughs> They become like part of the furniture, right? And it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see here. All right, so I'm going to throw this one out. So this is one that I bought ages ago, kind of sight unseen. And then I got it and I was kind of like, oh, this is kind of, eh. It's a <laughs> UFO live on Earth from recordings of Vienna, Cleveland, and Cincinnati. And I remember buying this just thinking, all right, you know, it's live UFO. I'm not really sure. This came out in 2003. Zoom Club Records, right? I remember yeah. they were releasing some stuff back then. I guess this is kind of like unofficial bootleggy type stuff. Yeah. But the packaging kind of, first of all, the cover blows. Yeah. It's just like, what is this? And then on the back and you get this weird out of focus shot, right? And I'm like, what is going on? You know, and then the, the, they don't really tell you much about the shows. You get, live, it's uh, four discs live in Vienna, Austria from 1998. Okay, mm -hmm. live in Vienna, Austria, a night. Oh, so it's the same show. So, and then you got live at the Agora Ballroom from Cleveland, Ohio, 1977. I think that's why I got this. Oh. It's okay, Shanker show, but right, you know, and then you get uh, live at Bogart, Cincinnati, Ohio, 1995. So, but then when you you open it up, there's like more photo photographs. Well, look at, I mean, look at that shot that you just had there, where it's basically a photo between the two guys. Yes, you, you barely even get you. One guy's cut off, and one guy's off to the side. Like, what are they taking a picture of? Yeah, it's, I think they had one photo that they licensed, and they used part of it on the back, 
part of it on the inside. They must and, have. It's, yeah. it's terrible. And it's a horrible, it's it's Michael Schenker, but it's hard. You wouldn't even know it's him. Right. It's, it's very not grainy. Great, not a great time in his life anyway, but uh, <laughs> it's just not a good shot. And then, you know, you got the discs all in this sort of thing. Right. And then there, there is a booklet, but it's, okay. you almost don't even know it's here because it's attached to this. And oh, it's, it, it's, 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 I hate it's, those. Yeah, and it's really not much of anything. You get some photographs and then a little bit of information about the shows. And that's really right. it. And the quality of the recordings are okay. They're nothing spectacular. But like, yeah. man, I think when I got this, I listened to this a couple times. Mm -hmm. I haven't listened to this in ages. And yeah. I, just, I saw it when I was getting ready to pull stuff for the show. And I'm like, this is like, this could have been such a better uh, box. And again, maybe because it's not, overly official or anything like that but right. still, it's like again it's one of those kind of crappy 90 sizes and it's just mm -hmm. this is just not very good but yet i still have it because i won't get rid of it right so. right i've got one of those same thing from zoom club which i learned my lesson like you i've only bought one of them but it was for the michael shanker group and it had four live shows on it and i realized they were maybe radio show recordings or even just high quality bootlegs but i heard more crowd noise in it than i wanted to meaning it was over the level of recording so when the band was playing it was kind of okay but they just weren't professionally recorded shows uh, in my opinion at least and done the same way uh you know the, the i hate the booklets that are glued into it um, the Jethro Tull one, at least, is like a book, so it has a real spine, and I can lay it flat, and I can read it, whereas the, the ones that are just kind of glued in there, and you, you got the, the discs flapping around over here, and this thing, and no good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I didn't even, that one is so far put away for me, I didn't even see it to pull it out, but I would have pulled that one out, too, because it's one of those ones that I kind of want to get rid of, because I don't like it, it bugs me, and as you said, it's, it's, it is unofficial. But it's official. It's just whoever owned those live recordings licensed it to Zoom Club, but it is not official by UFO or by Michael Schenker Group. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you draw the where, where do you draw the line as the fan? It's like you want more content, but I also just want the official stuff that the band is putting out. I don't really like these, you know unofficial ones they're doing it now with all those radio shows that are out there that are yeah and i have a ton of that stuff and i buy them because if, if i love the band why not and most of them are good quality because yeah you know at some point these bands are just going to stop releasing stuff officially that's just the way it is so you're really only going to get these recordings if you buy yeah. these kind of gray area things mm -hmm. so, but yeah whatever right well and this stuff uh comes and goes so quick i mean you mentioned it regarding like the jethro toll boxes these things come out they're on the market for three to five months, maybe. Then that's it. They've sold everything. It's gone. Then you got to go to eBay or Discogs or somewhere, and the price skyrockets on the stuff. Yep. So a lot of times I buy these boxes kind of regardless because I know I'm going to want it. Even if I get it and it kind of doesn't wow me in the moment, there'll be somewhere down the road that I'll be really jonesing for that band for something. And I go pull out that box and I'm like, Oh man, I'm so glad I bought this. You know, just that one more thing that you've got from them to listen to. Yeah. And even if at some point you want to unload it, at least you didn't pay an exorbitant amount of money for it because you didn't jump on it right away. You can always say, okay, well I paid, you know, retail for what it was you know going for at the time not a lot of money now here it is a year later i'm never going to list this again well maybe i can go sell or i can give it away or something it's not like you went later on when you didn't jump on yeah. and then you spent three hundred dollars or more on something and and now you know you paid triple what it was going for initially absolutely all right am i up again are you yeah, your last one yep oh i do okay um okay so um I was talking about Rolling Stones earlier and, uh, you know, skipping on some of their box sets and things, but they did this one in 2006, the singles collection uh, from 71 to 2006. Um, and I both love and dislove <laughs> this box set. Uh, the fact that I like, you know, just it's a great, great little thing. And it's, and it's small and it fits on my shelf with all my other ones. So I do like that. You slide this off, and then you get this cool thing that's here, and then the top comes off that, and now you've got 45 CDs doing, you know, replicating all of their singles at the time, however they came out. There is, whoops, <laughs> there is a book in the back of this thing, and it is a hardcover book with spine and everything. Um, there's plenty of stuff to read about all the singles and things that are that are in here. 
cool photos and stuff like that. My complaint about this is that each one of these, um, first of all, the, the, you know, the artwork should have been this way, right? If they're 45s, yeah. but they all operate sideways. So that bummed me out a little bit. It didn't fully recreate it. Um, but each of these have two, three, maybe four tracks on them. And what was cool and why I bought it is uh, they gather up all the bonus tracks or B-sides or whatever you would consider it from different countries. So maybe in the U.S., this one has four. Maybe in the U.S., uh, it had one B-side. But they put a different one on it in the UK and a different one on it in Japan. So then now they in the CD version, it collects has the single and the three bonus tracks from across the world all together. So I did really like that, but it's tedious to pull this out, to listen to those three tracks and then put this away and pull out another one in here and do that. So my complaint really is that I wish they had just gathered up all those B sides and put them on discs and not have to buy 45 CDs to get all of that stuff. Um, but at the same time, you know, I love it. It's just, it looks great, record. but they could have fit oh, all of that on great. like a five disc set probably. Right. Right. Absolutely. Um, there's one in here. Uh, and I don't remember uh, which one, but I think it was for a live single that was released from like the no security show or something in the late nineties. And it has nine or 10 B-side live tracks that aren't on that album. So there's one or two that are in here that are basically like a full length album, but I paid 250 bucks for this box. So is that worth, you know, to get two albums worth that I actually do pull out on occasion, 250 bucks, probably not, <laughs> but I still love it. And I'm not gonna get rid of it. And I was so happy when I got it, man, I was, uh, going crazy for this thing at that time but it's it's cool cool packaging it looks great yeah, yeah. Like if you're a rolling stone junkie right you gotta have yeah. it but yeah that's that's way too many cds for one collection yeah, yeah i mean the, the, uh, it's actually you know again brenda and i didn't compare notes about what we we're going to show today so it's it's interesting how he showed that which will segue into an aspect of my next box set and last box set which uh, drove me nuts when it came out but yeah i mean i i would think having something like that is very cool but yeah you got to go sorting i mean that's a lot of cds that's right 45 yeah that's i couldn't a, believe it i exactly. i had to look on wikipedia because when i opened this thing up i was like oh i think it's like 25 or something and i opened it and i was like wait what 45 yeah <laughs> even, even 25 is a lot we did a, a we do a show on the channel called curse of the collector and on the last episode yeah. or the one before jamie laszlo showed like the the um golden earring box set which has i think like 25 oh, in that very similar type set even that's kind of pushing it but that's 25 full albums right right this, like you know all these cds are like what are they 15 20 minutes worth of music on each one if, if even that yeah some of them are just two tracks yeah i mean that's ridiculous and then that that's again a perfect segue into my last one here which is the uh sabotage by black sabbath box oh. it came out not that long ago it says last year i believe yeah um, my favorite band of all time right so i'm gonna of course buy anything that they put out black Sabbath. Yep. i love the packaging again mm -hmm. uh, i did an unboxing on, on the channel here right this is one of these cool things yep. you get this and i'm sure you have this too so right um so you get the great book and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff but what really bugs me the most on this is that a uh make sure i get my info correct so this has got the um it's just a remaster of the Sabotage album, not a full remix. Right. It's right there. It's like, I already have bought multiple versions of Sabotage remastered. So what makes this one so different? Nothing really, right? But then you've got the live stuff. So you've got the North American Tour Live 1975 or 75, yeah, part one and part two, which that is cool. And they come in their own uh you know individual cds here kind of kind of cheesy but you know it's okay nothing great okay. as far as artwork goes but then you've got and you got a you know a poster which is cool and then you've got here's the uh the regular remastered mm -hmm. cd again i've had this remastered so many times but then they had an opportunity to do something really cool and they put out uh what what do they call it here the japanese single or yeah singles, right so you've get you got Am I Going Insane, the radio edit released in Japan, and you get Hole in the Sky. That's it. That's it. Two songs on one disc. 
Right. Like, why? Just so they could get four discs in the box. Yes. And they they could release it a... in this format. Right. Yeah. I mean, that it that to me is scraping the barrel when they do that. I mean, why do I need they, to listen to this? Yeah, you don't. You don't. There's, you know, there's the best thing about it is, is the is the the live shot. That's right. cool. Yeah, the artwork I mean, on. on it is cool, but it's it could just be a piece of paper. Could have just been a shot inside the book. Yeah, and quite frankly, you could have thrown. This is what I would have done if it was if they would have asked me, which they didn't. Uh, <laughs> I would have thrown those two Japanese single edits on the end of the remastered vert on the end of the remastered album, and then give us another bonus live disc or a DVD of some live footage. Right. Anything. Right. Or I mean, just the rest of it is great. They should have remixed the album. They did it for technical ecstasy. Yep. I, I love that. I, I bought that box simply for that remix that's in there. But then they also did a B sides collection, a rarities and outtakes and stuff yeah. disc. And we don't even and get I that. Think, no, yeah. We don't get that. Yeah. So yeah. To me, again, it looks great. I had mm -hmm. to buy it, but other than the live disc, the rest of this is, is kind of worthless. The book looks great, obviously. Yeah. But uh, and I love the live stuff. But again, a lot of this live stuff people have already heard before. Right, mm -hmm. so this is the first time ever you're hearing this stuff. So you know, for for people who are kind of on the fence, I wouldn't really recommend buying this one. Yeah. It, you have to have it if you're a collector. You're a massive fan. You're gonna get it. But there's really not enough here that, like you said, there's no remix. Right, we've already heard this album remastered numerous times. So really, you're just buying this for the live stuff, and you can get this live stuff elsewhere. Yeah, so, exactly. It, it, you know, and I think that one was like 65. Yeah. yeah. But I just thought that the price for that was way above what I was willing to spend to essentially not really be getting anything. So Black Sabbath is one of those bands where I've actually skipped a couple of those. I bought Paranoid and then I bought Technical Ecstasy Box, but I didn't buy the other two that have come out in between that. Yeah. That's... And it's like I do want it in the collection, but after a while, you got to for me, I got to draw the line somewhere because there are so many bands putting out box sets. Uh, if I want to buy these other ones, then I'm not going to buy those. Uh, try to balance, you know, balance out what you're spending. Yeah, we'll see what they do because I mean, we haven't got one for Sabbath Bloody Sabbath yet, right? There's there's talk of this yeah. new the, the Tony found the original Born Again, you know, masters, and we're going to get a right on that. You know, well, who knows, right? I, I've you know, I bought the the Heaven and Hell and uh, Mob Rules box sets. Again, right. they're fine for what they are. They're not quite as big and deluxe as these, but yeah. there's really not that much great new stuff on there. I bought the I bought the Live Evil one. Mm -hmm. which i wasn't yeah. gonna get but i was convinced by a good friend of mine that the yeah. remix is amazing and it is that's what I, okay that's that's what i want to know see i skipped that one too because i was sort of I like gonna, i bought it late and i was like i wasn't gonna get it and then everybody's telling me and uh, from a couple people i trust that the remix yeah. makes the album sound completely different and it mm. does so that was worth it that see that for me i'll go for that yeah, like, absolutely. Just another uh, remaster of Live Evil again. I was kind of like, I don't really care about that, you know, but a remix, well, it's a different story. Exactly. Um, I'm in the same boat with you on that. Got to give us something extra in these for us hardcore collectors that have already gone out and bought these things in other configurations and versions and stuff. So if you're going to put a gather things up and put a box together, there better be something in it for the, the hardcore fan. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So there you have it, everybody. Uh, we give you a jam-packed show today with all sorts of stuff. Uh, why some box sets are really worth the money and why some might not be. But, you know, there may be some that we showed today that you you really like them for various reasons or maybe some of the ones that we really like you don't for obvious reasons or, or not obvious reasons. So down in the comments below, let us know what you think. Or maybe there's some box sets that really uh, work for you that we didn't mention that you want to talk about or stuff that you uh, have picked up that are kind of like a disappointment. So that's what the comment section is for. And uh, Brendan, you want to give a quick plug to your uh, channel before we let you go? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. So, so uh, yeah, if you guys are new to me, uh, you can find me on YouTube. It's just under my name, Brendan Snyder. And um, yeah, I do all kinds of content on there, pretty much like what you do, uh, Pete, here. So album reviews, top tens, various news type shows and stuff like that. So, yeah, come on over and check me out. Cool. There you go. So uh, I want to thank you very much for coming on the show today. This was yeah. a lot of fun. I knew it would be. And that's always good to kind of geek out and talk about. Some <laughs> stuff. This, this... Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Hopefully we can do some more down the road. 
Sounds good. Sounds good. So uh, thanks everybody for watching and sticking with us here. Visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Please go check out Brendan's show. And uh, what, let's see, what do we got coming up here this uh, weekend? So we've got tomorrow ranking the albums of Sly and the Family Stone. I'll be joined by Grant Arthur from The Contrarians and uh, Grant's Rock Warehouse. So stay tuned for that. And then, of course, we got uh, Monday night coming up. The Hudson Valley Squares, we're doing our Q&A show over there. So don't miss that. And uh, lots more to happen here on the channel. So thanks for watching. For Brendan Snyder, I am Pete Pardo. See you all real soon. Take care. Thanks, guys.